Hi, so welcome to Business Ethics, the law versus ethics and the sad reality. In the United States, over 50 doctors have been accused of fertility fraud, using their own sperm to father children without the patient's knowledge or consent. Hundreds of children have been fathered by non-consensual insemination worldwide by their physicians but these acts often go unpunished because while it is totally unethical it is not illegal in most countries in this presentation i give an introduction to ethics morals and the law hi everyone my name is shayo umologome aka lady shayo and I am a management consultant, public speaker, and business trainer. And I have over 25 years professional experience in finance, business strategy, and leadership. And I've also had the privilege of speaking on several platforms internationally and locally. But on this channel, I address issues that affect you in the corporate space. So if you need a business coach, a public speaker, trainer, or facilitator, then you can get in touch. Now in this video, I give a brief introduction to business ethics, and the sad reality that ethics and morals are not always backed up by law. So please remember to like this video, comment, let me hear your comments in the comment section, share it, and of course, subscribe to my channel. You can also link up with me on my other social media channels. I have all the links in the comments to this video. Right, so let's get into the presentation and I'm going to give a backstory to my introductory statement. What is all the hula baloo about doctors fathering children all over the place without the consent and permission of the unfortunate patients? So when children were conceived by artificial um, insemination in the 1970s and, and 1980s, sperm banks were not prevalent and the practice of freezing sperm was not widespread. So many physicians used so-called sperm from donors. After the AIDS epidemic, physicians started using frozen sperm. Now that allowed them to test for AIDS after six months. And you know that the AIDS virus um, has an incubation period of, of six months. But many physicians donated sperm as medical students in the 1960s and 1970s. And some observers believe that these um, doctors or student doctors may have gone on to use their own sperm to treat infertility when they were trying to build a reputation for themselves as successful fertility doctors. In the United States, over 50 fertility doctors have been accused of fraud in connection with donating sperm, according to a February 2022 news report. Hundreds of children have been fathered by non-consensual insemination worldwide by their physicians, including in the United States, Canada, and the Netherlands. But without specific laws outlawing it, the legal consequences are unclear. Sometimes other laws related to fertility fraud are used against the physician, such as mail, travel, or wire fraud, while others face civil suits. Some physicians have faced ethics charges by the governing bodies of their profession and lost their license to practice medicine. These physicians' actions may have been unethical, but they are not considered illegal at the time, and therefore they could not be effectively prosecuted. So, in this discussion, I give a brief introduction to business ethics, morals, and the law, how they relate to each other, and the sad reality that what might be unethical and immoral might not necessarily be illegal, and therefore cannot be punished by law. Some of us might know this gentleman. His name is Dr. Donald Klein. Some of us might have watched the documentary, but for those of us who haven't, I'm going to give a background information. So between 1974 and 1987, Donald Klein, a former American medical doctor of obstetrics and gynecology, inseminated patients who came to his clinic 
with his own sperm without their consent or knowledge. In 2014, when Jacoba Ballard, a daughter of a former patient of Dr. Klein, reviewed the results of her at-home DNA test, she discovered a biological connection to eight previously unknown half-siblings. You can imagine waking up one morning and finding out that you've got eight half-siblings. That was not the end of the story. Her genetic genealogy research ultimately revealed Klein, her mother's fertility doctor, as her biological father. Imagine that. Ballard filed a complaint with the Attorney General of Indiana, who initiated an investigation in 2015. Then, Indiana Attorney General Tim Delaney declined to prosecute because there was no law forbidding Klein's conduct. So he agreed that it was a violation, but there was no law to back it up. So there was no point in prosecuting. So Ballard then pursued media coverage. Fox 59 anchor Angela Gannot investigated her story. And during the investigation, she learned that Klein had lied to the Attorney General's office in their investigation. So charges were filed against Klein. In the state of Indiana versus Donald Klein, Klein pleaded to two level six felony counts of obstruction of justice and received, what did he receive? One year suspended sentence. That was all he received. So Klein unethically fathered 94 children. As at the 11th of May, 2022 that's this year dna testing confirms klein had fathered a total of 94 children you can imagine 94 people suddenly realizing that the person that they knew as their father is not their biological father so while this act is totally unethical and a breach of doctor patient privilege at the time of the incursion it was not illegal for doctors to do this as there was no law prohibiting it. As a result, therefore, Klein could not be prosecuted under the law for this unsavory act. Other charges were brought against him and he paid damages to some of the families running into millions of dollars, but he was never directly charged for violation of his victims' rights. This is a typical example of an act being totally unethical, but not illegal. Netflix did a documentary on the story, so if it's still um if it's still available, you can go and watch it. And I'm sure if you you know search on Google, there are a lot of there's a lot of information about the case. As at 2022, only four states in America, Colorado, Indiana, Texas, and Florida, have created laws to protect patients against future acts of fertility fraud. So let's start our discussion. What exactly is ethics? Ethics. Generally speaking, ethics are moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. It's the branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles. So now let's, you know, take a deeper look at what ethics is. Ethics is based on well-founded standards of right and wrong that prescribe what humans ought to do, usually in terms of rights, obligations, benefits to society, fairness, or specific virtues. We can go on to say ethics generally refers to the fair and just treatment and prevention of harm to other human beings, maybe possibly animals and the planet. You know, if you look at that to an, an ex, um, to, um, to, if you extend that, but basically it's the prevention of harm to human beings. And ethics promotes the prevention of physical, emotional or psychological harm to others. It promotes the rights of human beings for example, the right to live, the right to privacy, the right to freedom of expression, etc. And in the case we looked at earlier, there was extensive psychological and emotional harm done to the victim. So, like I said, imagine uh, you're, you're, you have just one child and you now discover you're a man and you discover 30 years down the line that that child is not your biological child because one doctor threw away your, your sperm and used his own. I mean, that the whole thought of it 
it's you know it's it's totally i don't know the words to use it for i don't know i just don't know the words to use for it it's not acceptable in any way but that's the sad reality and he couldn't be prosecuted because there was no law for it so still on our discussion what ethics is not first and foremost ethics is not feelings ethics does not equate to your feelings though as an individual you may have very high ethical standards but a person's feelings are very volatile and may be quite different depending on the circumstances so your feelings you feel different things under different situations if someone does something offensive to to a person the person might feel or he might feel obliged to retaliate and you know take laws into his own action so you can't ethics is, is not based on feelings in any way ethics is also not based on religious beliefs so ethics in as much as um, religious beliefs have very high ethical standards, at least most religions have very high ethical standards, but if ethics, if ethics were, you know, confined to religion, then ethics would only apply to people who are religious or who have um, um, beliefs. Ethics applies to everyone. As much to the behavior of the atheist as it does to the behavior of the devout religious person. So you can't, we cannot, um, how do I put it? We cannot restrict ethics to um, religion alone. So religion will, however, promote and motivate high standards of ethical behavior. But we have to look at ethics beyond religion. Ethics is also not the law, as we have seen. Ethics does not, ethics is, you know, is not the law. Because as we have seen, that ethics is not the same as the law and being ethical is also not the same as following the law so you can be very ethical and you might not necessarily be following the law depending on what the law says the law often incorporates ethical standards which we will agree to which most citizens subscribe subscribe but laws like feelings can deviate from what is ethical for example once upon a time it was legal to own slaves which was not ethical because it's violating um the human uh, is violating human rights rights of freedom rights of freedom of speech of expression and a whole lot of other rights so but once upon a time it was actually legal so the law um ethics does not equate to the law ethics is not the law they are not the same so finally ethics does not is not the same as what is generally accepted by society as well so we can't just say that okay um the society the general act the general norm within the society is this and that doesn't make it ethical so being ethical is not the same as doing whatever the society accepts in any society most people accept standards that are in fact ethical but standards of behavior in society can deviate from what is ethical an entire society can become ethically corrupt and i can give examples of that and i'm sure you can give examples of that as well but i won't say more than that for now so that brings us to the next question what are morals what are morals Morals are standards of behavior. What you believe to be right and wrong. And most often, individuals determine their own moral standards. So we as individuals, we determine our moral standards. However, there are guidelines all about, around us to help us determine what we should uh, maintain as our moral standard. So I'm going to look at some of the literature behind morality. So morality from the Latin moralitas, manner, character, and proper behavior, that's what it means, is the differentiation of intentions, decisions, and actions between those that are distinguished as proper, right, and those that are improper or what is considered to be wrong. And that's from the Wikipedia. So morals are the prevailing standards of behavior that enable people to live cooperatively in groups. Moral values are relative values that are that protect life and are respectful of the due life value of 
individuals and the others around them or other people around them. So a person who knows the difference between right and wrong and chooses right is moral. A person whose morality is reflected in his willingness to do the right thing, even if it is hard or dangerous, is ethical. So we can see the difference between um, what is considered to be morally right and what is considered to be ethical. Ethics are moral values in action. And that definition is from McCombs School of Business. Our relative moral values must be constantly examined to make sure that they are always performing their life protecting mission. Now, remember I said that the whole point of ethics is to ensure that no harm comes to any other person or comes to any human being. So on a regular basis, as an individual, you must continuously examine your moral standards to ensure that they are doing exactly what they are supposed to do. And that is protecting the lives of other people around you. So how are morals determined? Morals are often influenced by culture, religion, traditional beliefs, even education. We're taught so many things in school. You're taught right or wrong. You're taught how to um, help other people first before yourself. I mean, we're taught a lot of things, our religion, our backgrounds, um, th the things your, our parents taught us, our mothers, our grandmothers, all of these things affect our moral standards. And we can give some you know, examples of moral standards like integrity, honesty, gratitude, fairness, mutual respect, inclusion. So as human beings, we have a moral sense because our biological makeup determines the presence of three necessary conditions for ethical behavior. Number one, we have the ability to anticipate that there are consequences to our actions. Secondly, we have the ability to make value judgments, so we can take decisions, you know, intellect, um, intelligently. And thirdly, we have the ability to choose between alternative courses of action. So we have these three uh, moral compasses, as you, or if you want to put it that way, that we have that ability to make choices. We know that if we do make a choice, there are consequences of that choice. So we can determine and make the right choice to choose the right line of action. So the question of ethics and morals will constantly make us ask this question, should I? Morality is an inner sense of rightness about our behavior and the behavior of others. How we feel, think and act about the concepts of good and bad are all parts of our morality. Morals are a system of beliefs that is taught for deciding good or bad as opposed to coming from within and are emotionally related for deciding right or wrong. Morals have more social value and acceptance than values, with a person being judged more for their moral character than their value. Many moral rules and values vary between different cultures and also they change over time. So we see that what might have been acceptable 50 years ago or 100 years ago, generally acceptable or considered to be a moral standard, you know, coming to today is has changed. Um, we see that in our society. So once upon a time, it was ethically all right or considered to be ethically okay to own a to own a human being, but that has changed now. And so the, the over time, morals will change. So now let's come to what then are business ethics. So we've talked about ethics, we talked about morals. Business ethics is the study of business situations, activities and decisions where issues of right and wrong are addressed. And that's the definitions from Andrew Crane. The Institute of Business Ethics states that business ethics is the application of ethical values to business behavior. Business ethics is relevant both to the conduct of individuals and to the conduct of the organization as a whole and applies to any and all aspects of business conduct from boardroom strategies and how companies treat their employees to suppliers and sales techniques and accounting practices. So the, all of these things will affect your organization when we are considering the issue of business ethics. Another definition of business ethics 
given by Raymond C. Bonhart, is that the ethics of business is the ethics of responsibility. The businessman must promise that he will not harm knowingly. So ethics goes beyond the legal requirements for a company and is therefore about discretionary decisions and behavior guided by values. Now, are ethics the same as law? No, of course not. We've already seen that in the examples that we've given. The law refers to a systematic body of rules that governs the whole society and the actions of its individual members. And it is enforceable by punishment. So we've seen in the case that we talked about earlier, um, about the, the doctor committing fertility fraud. Because it is unethical, yes, totally unethical, but it was not illegal. So he didn't get any, it was not, they couldn't enforce it by law. He, he didn't get any um, corporal punishment or legal punishment. He was able to go um, literally scot-free, if you want to put it that way. But the law is a systematic body of rules and they are enforceable. There are punishments that um, you would have to, uh, and um, you'd have to, you would you'd be given punishment if you do not uh, um, abide by the laws of the land. The law ethics are a personal set of rules by which an individual holds himself accountable, whereas laws are governed by the government or the the controlling body of a particular society. And we have different laws, um, organizations have laws, professional bodies have laws, and there are punishments that they can mete out to people who contravene any law. So some ethical behavior has been backed by law, for example, lying under oath or committing murder. Yes, it's backed by law, but a lot of ethical norms are not, e.g. committing adultery. It's unethical but it's not illegal. So there is some gray areas between what is illegal and what may be considered unethical. Again, let's remember our Dr. Donald Klein. So this slide gives us um, a, you know, a snapshot of the differences between ethics and the law. Starting with what? Laws are enforceable rules. Ethics are behavioral guidance. Laws are governed by regulatory bodies, the government, whereas ethics are individual norms, religious bodies, or cultural and traditional behavior. So if you are a member of a religious body, for example, you are a member of a church or a mosque, there will be guidelines on how you as a member should behave. And there will be sanctions if you contravene those behaviors. So um, if you are caught lying, for example, and um, within your church environment or your society, there might be sanctions against your activity for doing that. So how is the law expressed? It must be documented. But ethics sometimes can be quite abstract. They could be verbal. Sometimes they could be documented if it's a structured society. Sometimes they can be documented, but generally speaking, it's quite, it can be quite abstract and verbal. And also it leaves room for various interpretation. The law, of course, has, is punishable by fine or imprisonment, very serious punishments if you break a law. But ethics, on the other hand, is not really punishable by law, but it can be sanctioned, like I said earlier, especially if you are the member of a particular society. So you are like Dr. Klein now. Um, he's be, been found guilty of medical malpractice. So his medical license can be seized, but he's not going to be um, sent to jail because what he did was not illegal at the time. But ethically, it was totally unethical. So his practicing license could be seized by the medical association to which he belongs. And finally, the objective. The objective of law is to provide societal order. And the objective of ethics is to help individuals, organizations decide what is right or wrong. So a summary of our conversation today, law and ethics are different. It's what a person must do versus what a person should do. So the law says what you must do 
while ethics will tell you what you should do. The law is universally accepted, while ethics are ideal human conduct, agreed upon by most people. Ethics and the law align and do not contradict each other. Both are supposed to go side by side. And every person is equal in the eyes of the law and also in the eyes of ethics. Remember that just because it is unethical does not mean that it is illegal. So remember our doctor, Donald Klein, who abused his position and took undue advantage of vulnerable people who came to him for professional help. I want to plead with every one of us, do not be like him. Always, always, always and always do the ethical thing. Do the right thing. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video. Comment in the comment section. What are your thoughts? What are your views? What have you experienced? Have you seen something that is unethical but uh, is not illegal? Have you been a victim of that kind of activity? I'd like to hear your experience, your thoughts in the comment section. So please drop me a line. Remember to click on the subscribe button. Feel free to share this video with your friends, your colleagues, or anybody that you feel needs this information. And of course, remember to hit the notification bell so that when I drop another video, you will get that information. Thank you so much for watching. And I do hope that this, um, this um, presentation has been helpful, educative, and informative. So bye for now.